Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. Let's talk about chromatic aberration. What it is and why it is. This is an HD remaster of a previous video of mine on that very topic. We've seen this awkward label pop up in the settings of many games in recent years. And you may have wondered, what's it about? It's distortion that simulates an out-of-focus lens? Uh, no. Then what the hell is chromatic aberration? In short, it's when the colors start to separate at the edges of an image. But what causes chromatic aberration? What's the underlying science? And why would developers add this to their games? Chromatic aberration is what happens when light is passing through a photographic lens. To understand exactly what's going on, first we have to briefly revisit what light is and colors are, scientifically. In essence, light is electromagnetic radiation. Depending on its wavelength, we perceive this radiation as different colors. Light with a long wavelength appears red. The shorter this wavelength gets, it first becomes yellow, then green, then blue, purple, until we can't see it anymore. The complete mixture of all the visible wavelengths is white light, as demonstrated here by Pink Floyd. Now with that in mind, let's look at this diagram of a photo lens exhibiting no chromatic aberration. This thing here is called the focal plane. In a camera, it's where the film or the camera chip is. When a ray of light enters the lens, it changes direction, it's being refracted, to appear sharp on the focal plane. The further from the lens's center a light ray enters, the more it needs to be bent. Let's do the same thing on a lens with strong chromatic aberration. A ray of light through the center passes pretty much unaffected. But let's see what happens when a ray enters the lens at its edge. Instead of refracting all visible wavelengths by the same amount, this lens bends shorter wavelengths more than longer ones. The result is that white light gets broken up into the visible spectrum again. The further from the lens center this happens, the worse it gets. Instead of a sharply defined outline, we get a rainbow smudge. That's also the name of my all-unicorn punk band. Here's an image without chromatic aberration and with strong chromatic aberration. But why would anyone want to recreate that for video games? In fact, there's a long tradition in games and computer graphics in general to strive for photorealism, for creating something digitally that looks as if it were photographed in the real world. CGI, or computer-generated imagery, innately looks extremely clean and artificial. In order to make something look more like the real thing, we try to recreate physically correct lighting and shadows, reflections, indirect lighting, and so on. But this only gets us so far. To make a rendering photo real, we also have to simulate the optical properties and shortcomings of actual cameras and photographic lenses. In video games, you see it starting sometime around the mid-1990s. In the beginning, there were lens flares. By the way, I made another video about those as well. Link is here and in the description. Later, in the early 2000s, everyone went cray-cray with bloom to soften the entire image a little. Or much more than a little. Then, of course, there's film grain, motion blur, vignetting, that's the darkening of the image towards the edges. Let's go find this patrol. Ah, Jesus. Dirt and drips on the lens. And, of course, chromatic aberration. In short, while lens and camera manufacturers have been trying to mitigate and even eliminate all those unwanted artifacts for decades to be able for you to capture the cleanest footage possible, in CGI and games we just keep piling that shit onto our clinically perfect renderings to make them more... 
real. So the question is, when is chromatic aberration justified? And is it ever? My answer? It depends. When chromatic aberration is used subtly and with purpose, it can work. For example, when trying to recreate the atmosphere of a movie. Take alien isolation, for example. Shit. The game was intended to look just like the alien movie from the late 1970s. Ten minutes. Even perfectly recreated props, sets and lighting are not enough. To capture the feel of the movie, it helps if the game appears as if it was shot with the same camera system and film stock as the movie. Personally, I'm a proponent of using chromatic aberration as yet another stylistic tool to communicate certain information to the players visually, certain modes for example, or status effects. You notice it underwater in Inside, the tactical mode in the Final Fantasy VII Remake or when taking damage in Black Mesa. A bit much though. As with any other post-processing effects, I feel that chromatic aberration shouldn't be in a game just because everyone does it. It should be used subtly and with purpose. And as with all the other post-effects, please give players the option to deactivate it if they don't like it. So, what do you think about chromatic aberration? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you never really noticed it before? Uh, please let me know in the comments and I hope this was informative, it was helpful, it was at least a little bit entertaining. Either way, thank you so much for watching and have a great day or evening or morning. This video was made possible by my wonderful supporters on Patreon. If you are also a wonderful person, head over to patreon.com slash pixelprophecy. Or if you just want to invite me to a coffee or a candy bar, you can do so at pixelprophecy.com slash donate for a one-time donation. Thanks for watching.